Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar about the secondary schools in Amsterdam. There are still people coming in. I hope you can hear me well. Well, I see a lot of familiar names and uh, so thank you for being here and also the people I haven't met before. And I'm not by myself, I'm here with Emma. Hello everyone. So we, we'll introduce ourselves uh, here. For the ones who uh, don't know me yet, my name is Annabeth van Hameren and almost 10 years ago I started my own business, uh, New to NL. I help international families find a school for their children in the Netherlands. Now my own uh, children are uh, getting older. I'm also more and more uh, specialized in uh, secondary schools. Uh, they are now uh, 13 and uh, 10. And as many as you, uh, we are a family of half Dutch, that's me, and half non-Dutch, which is my husband is from the US. Our children are bilingual as well. But I don't know everything about secondary schools yet. And that's why I asked Emma to uh, join me. I also don't know everything about secondary schools, but um, let me quickly uh, introduce myself as well. Well, my name is Emma. Some of you may know me from the uh, Facebook group Amsterdam Mamas, where Jenny introduced me to um, many years ago. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> I have two children in, uh, in Dutch schools here in the city. Um, my daughter is 14 and um, she's attending Vierde Gymnasium in Houthavens. And I have a nine-year-old boy who is in Groep 6 um, in Theo Thijssen School um, here in, uh, in Centrum. I'm not a teacher, I'm not a consultant. <laughs> I just really like um, statistics. And a couple of years ago, I saw the um, statistics about the lottery here in Amsterdam and um, I dove into it made one of my infamous Excel sheets. Annabeth saw what I was doing and um, well, that's <laughs> where we started off. But I'm really uh, curious where your children are. Are they in Group 8 or um, are they still younger or are they already in middelbare school and are you looking to switch? So um, let's start, I think. Yes, this is the agenda for tonight. So we'll uh, briefly talk about Dutch education system, but then especially the secondary schools, of course. Then the differences with primary school, which are a lot. And then you will see that a lot of schools are very different from each other. But first we'll talk about the similarities between the secondary schools and then the differences. Of course, we cannot talk about all the schools, but we'll, uh, we'll do our best to uh, highlight some important things. We'll show how the schools are spread out over the city what types of schools there are, some schools in the spotlight, uh, that so just some different schools to get you a better feel of how they work. So uh, the plan is we should be finished by 10 p.m. Last year we also gave this webinar and then there were so many questions that we ran a bit over. This is the uh, diagram you have maybe seen before. We'll um, just briefly explain how the Dutch system works. If your child is already in group eight, then you probably already know this, but very short, there's basically three types of education in secondary. There is uh, VMBO, HAVO and VWO. A VMBO is like a vocational education and that takes four years. Then HAVO is more uh, generic education, which takes five years. And then VWO is pre-university education, which takes six years. If you look closely, then you will see all those arrows back and forth. And that means that after uh, completing VMBO, so after the fourth year with your diploma, you can move to the fourth year of HAVO. And after the fifth year of HAVO with your diploma, you can move to the fifth year of VWO. After VMBO you can do uh, MBO as well and MBO really trains you for a profession. We see on a few slides later what kind of professions uh, you should think of. But after the MBO you can start working or you can go to HBO which is University for Applied Sciences. That's another difference with a lot of countries. In the Netherlands you have Research University and University for Applied Sciences. So research university, you need a VWO for that, but after half a you can go to University for Applied Sciences. There's also some people after VWO diploma, they go to University for Applied Sciences. So it's not that you have to go to research university. So there's a lot of crossovers possible. And 
as we will see later in the, um, in the webinar, a lot of secondary schools, they have what they call a brug class, and that's a bridge class for uh, multiple streams in the, in the first year. And sometimes also the first uh, two years or even three years. So if your child needs more time to develop and understand what is the best fitting uh, type of education for them, it's a good idea to choose one of those schools with multiple levels in the first year or later. So like I said, the VMBO uh, takes four years and it prepares for uh, MBO, which is Senior Secondary Vocational Education. Uh, after the second year, you can choose four types of training. Uh, so those are the letters that you will see uh, after a VMBO. So there's the first ones are a bit more practical and the other ones are a bit more theoretical. So to prepare for the next step uh, of HAFO. Do you have anything to add about the VMBO? Well, maybe not VMBO, but how many children actually go to each stream? Because um, I guess some of you uh, go to the Dutch education uh, group every now and then, and then it seems that everyone is on a VWO track on the way to research university. But in reality, in the Netherlands, more than 50% of all group achters go to VMBO, 25% do HAVO, and 25% um, graduate with a VWO diploma. And I think it's important to realize that there are many ways to roam and um, this is not the end all. So the next slide is about the VMBO, uh, the sectors that uh, the students can choose. And they have to specialize in either technical, agriculture, economics or care and welfare. So then they really train for the, um, the professions that you can uh, get after that. Then the next step is uh, HAFO, and HAFO is some more uh, generic education or also called Senior G General Secondary <laughs> Education. So that takes five years. And after the third year, uh, the students have to choose. There's four profiles that uh, they have to choose from. So culture and society or economics and society, nature and health or nature and technology. So the first three years are uh, roughly the same and then they take uh, specialization. In HAFO there is a minimum of seven exam subjects and like I said before it prepares for uh, University of Applied Sciences but you can also go to the fifth year of VWO and that is pre-university education. So there's two types of VWO that's Atheneum and Gymnasium and Atheneum and gymnasium are both VWO, so you get uh, the same diploma in the end. But the main difference is that at gymnasium, the students also get Latin and ancient Greek and also more uh, classical studies about the Romans and the Greeks. But they both give equal access to universities. So I know in some countries you have to go to um, gymnasium to study medicine at university, for example. That is not the case here. It is handy, of course, when you know the Latin names, also for biology maybe, but it's not uh, a requirement. After the third year, they have to choose a profile which is the same as uh, HAFO. And here the students need to have eight exam subjects. I see a question coming in. So Emma is also answering the questions uh, already, but maybe this is interesting question is about what's the advantage of gymnasium versus Atheneum. So I'll uh, give the question to Emma because her daughter is in uh, gymnasium. Um, I don't think there's really an advantage. It's more that what's your child interested in. If they have a VBO at Gries, they can um, choose between Atheneum uh, stream or gymnasium stream. There is no gymnasium advies as such. So you actually have to choose to do gymnasium. There's no university asking for Latin or Greek, except for when you really want to study Latin or Greek in university. But you don't need it to study medicine or law or whatever. So it's just the old languages are really just because you like doing them. There's also no gymnasium diploma. There's only a VBO diploma. And I think if there is an actual advantage, it's for uh, children like my daughter who are not interested in studying French or German. And um, you get um, an exemption when you're in a gymnasium. You don't have to do a modern language uh, because you're already doing Latin or Greek. When you're doing Ateneum, 
you have to do um, French or German or Spanish or whatever modern language your school is offering. There was also a question about what is VWO plus. So some schools advertise with that. It's not really one specific term, so every uh, school has a different meaning to that. But what they often mean is that they don't have a gymnasium, but they uh, they offer some extra subjects in the VWO, uh, so the Ateneum diploma in that case. Now here are uh, some of the professions. Of course, there is many more, uh, but just to give you you an idea, so after VMBO you can go to MBO and MBO. Uh, students, they when they graduate, they can become uh, like an assistant or a secretary or security officer, office employee, hairdresser, nurse, childminder. There's many more professions, of course, but hopefully you get the idea. With um, HBO diploma, so University of Applied Sciences, you can become a teacher, accountant, manager, team leader, banker, translator, estate agent, art director, journalist, also an airplane pilot which in a lot of other countries you need to have university uh, education for. And also some type of engineer, so you have engineer, in, yeah, at least in the Netherlands, you have ING, and that is HBO study, and then uh, IR, abbreviation for engineer, is uh, university study. And with university, you could also become a lawyer, a psychologist, doctor, surgeon, specialist, researcher, notary, difference is that the um, HBO is a bit more uh, practical and uh, university research university is a bit more theoretical. But there's also some professions, for example, uh, nurse. Uh, you can become a nurse with an MBO diploma, but also with an HBO diploma, but then it's more at managerial uh, role, different types of nurses. And in the same way, also for a lot of technical uh, jobs, there's people with different uh, education. There's a lot of things uh, possible here. And this is uh, something uh, I've been facing last year with my son uh, when he had to apply for secondary school. And there are so many differences with primary school and a lot of them. So even for me as being a specialist in this area, I've had a lot of surprises uh, in the beginning of this school year. Um, big difference is that uh, from being the oldest in primary school, they are now the youngest of the secondary school. And, and they are really small kids when you see those, uh, especially those uh, six year VWO students. And suddenly they grow up very fast. They become much more independent. Um, they uh, have different way of talking. They uh, they're just becoming teenagers, and uh, <laughs> that's a big difference as well. And for a lot of children, the secondary school is much further than uh, the primary school. So in most cases, they go by bike to school, and about twenty minutes is kind of average. Some live closer by, others, uh, like my own son, they have to cycle further. But also for the parents, a lot changes because most of the communication goes through the, um, the children. So a lot of things you you hear through your children or uh, they have an app or another communication tool. And in that way, you communicate with school. And in most cases, you don't really get to know the teachers, but there's often a mentor that the parents are in touch with. So if there's something, then uh, you have to talk with the mentor. So it's very different from primary school where you just walk in a classroom and you know the teacher uh, for a while already. It's uh, I really had to get used to that as well as a parent. Um, they have school trips and they uh, don't ask parents to join anymore. So it's also uh, different. And uh, something my son really had to get used to was uh, you have a lot of different subjects and in most cases you have books for uh, each subject. So a lot of different books and you have to bring them to school, which is very heavy. And you also need a notebook to write down uh, the notes. And my son had one notebook for all the subjects. So uh, page one, uh, math, page two, Dutch, page three, history. And he didn't realize that <laughs> that's really not working. So 
all those things you have to monitor if the child understands well and uh, and how they deal with that. It depends a bit on the school, but in most cases uh, for every subject they have a different teacher and then uh, the teachers often have their own classroom and the students they have to change classrooms. So they're walking a lot through the hallways. So in the beginning they get uh, lost a bit or they don't realize that you really have to pick up your stuff and then move to the next classroom. So that can be uh, a bit confusing for them as well. They get a lot of homework and in the primary schools often there was not much homework, at least uh, not in our experience. And now it's pretty common that about one and a half hours per day uh, the students have to do their homework. But also this varies per school, so that's a good question to ask when you visit the schools. And uh, sometimes they get homework support uh, at school. Often parents have to pay for that. In other cases, uh, school offers that for free. So that's also something you have to work out. It's also very common that after a few months, the timetable changes and every day has a different schedule. And then the whole schedule changes again uh, after a while. So it, you really have to get used to that. Unfortunately, a lot of schools are suffering from a teacher shortage. Uh, teachers are sick or they change jobs and then yeah, there's no coverage. Uh, so sometimes they ask uh, trainees or uh, students who are almost done with their teacher training or other professionals. So that also they try to cover it, but not always that's possible. And then you have um, what we call in Dutch, uh, tussen uurs, like in between hour, that there's no class then. And a lot of schools, they have rules for the younger students that they're not allowed to leave the school premises during uh, in between hour, but that also depends on the school. So if they are smart, they can do their homework. At least that's what the parents think, but often they have other ideas about that. A lot of schools also have a canteen where the students uh, eat their lunch or they can buy something. It's not full meals, but some snacks and things that uh, you can buy there and they can just hang out there and, uh, and chill or they uh, can go outside and play. And so that also varies per school how the facilities are. And uh, but you will find a lot of differences no matter what. So be prepared for that. Then there's also a couple of things that are um, yeah, very similar uh, between the schools. Um, so there's a minimum uh, number of hours that the schools have to teach. So for VMBO, that is um, 3,700 hours for four years uh, in total. And VWO is uh, 5,700 hours for the six years in total. So in general, that's about 20 to 30 hours per week. The students who are in gymnasium, so have Latin and ancient Greek, they usually have a couple of more hours. And then it is common, but it also depends per school, that they have fewer hours of um, French and German. But how the schools divide those hours over the week and over the months, that is up to them. Maybe in the primary school of your child, they didn't really get grades, but here in the secondary, in most cases, they get a grade from one to ten. Five and a half is the smallest possible uh, sufficient grade. In order to pass to the next year, you have to have um, a certain average, and that also varies a little bit. Uh, but in general, you need to have a um, sufficient grade for the um, the compulsory subjects, the main subjects like Dutch and English and math, and there are some other requirements as well. So it's very important to look for the, what they call in Dutch, the overgangsnormen, so the pass norms to um, how to move to the next grade. And most schools, they have um, an online platform um, called Magister or Zermelo or Some Today. And there you can find all the grades of your child and um, also the homework and the timetable. So often they have a student access and a parent access. So that is something to keep track of. In my, uh, my son's case, when he has um, a, a new grade for a test, then 
the parents get automatically a message. So sometimes we know it before him, uh, which he doesn't always like very much. So in that way, you can just um, make sure that you are aware about how your child is doing. It's common that for two or three times per year, you have a meeting with the mentor and then you talk about your child's grades and how things are going and if they need more homework support, if they need other things. So those uh, meetings are very uh, important. And the mentor also um, has a mentor class. Usually the mentor is a teacher of one of the subjects. So in uh, my son's case, it's the gym teacher who is his mentor. And then they also talk about um, uh, group dynamics and uh, study skills and um, how to do your homework and how to learn for a test and all those things. That's the mentor's uh, responsibility. In some schools, they also have student mentors, and that is additional to the teacher mentor. And the idea of a student mentor is that the children, they know, so it's older children from the same school, and they know better how it works in the first year so they can explain things in their own way and maybe uh, the first year students uh, feel more comfortable with that. Uh, most schools also have lockers and then especially if they have a lot of books then they can maybe put a few books for the afternoon they can put in the locker and then halfway through the day uh, swap. Now students have other things in the lockers as well. Uh, sometimes you have to pay extra for that, uh, sometimes they're free uh, so that also varies per school. And it's also common that there's not enough lockers, so you have to arrange that very quickly. Or share one. Or share one, it's also common, but then I've heard students and one lost uh, the key card and then they both couldn't enter the locker anymore. And now <laughs> it's a whole thing. It's also common that there are school parties, so the school organizes them and sometimes it's only for the first year students or for the first three years, or if it's a smaller school for the entire school. That can be uh, crazy sometimes. Um, I think uh, you have more experience with that. The school parties? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we just, uh, my daughter started um, right in the middle of COVID, so she was really disappointed of the lack of parties. And I think that the first one they held was in a club uh, on Leidseplein and uh, the children had no idea how they were supposed to behave so it was a bit um, a bit of a bummer I think. <laughs> but yeah I think in, in general about the parental contribution which should be voluntary and that it's always been voluntary but some schools many schools um, pretended that it was um, mandatory to pay and I think that that will change in the next few years that um, some schools will um, they will find it hard to find the money to do the extra stuff like the parties and the school trips. And I'm really I don't know how that's going to play out now that parents know that they don't have to pay. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's it's another direction. You didn't think it was going this way, but it's just something that's been in my mind. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the parental contribution, so the average is about 550 euros per year. But like Emma said, it is officially voluntarily. And parents who cannot afford this amount, they can um, ask for a subsidy through the municipality. But the school sort of counts on parents paying for that. Books are free, though. Yeah, books are free. And... Yeah, some schools have only books, other schools work a lot uh, online with a tablet or a Chromebook or a laptop. Uh, some have a combination of uh, digital and books. Uh, so that's also a difference between the schools that uh, you have to ask how that works at the school. But all uh, study materials are free, but stationary and uh, you have to buy yourself and notebooks and calculator and a lot of other stuff. Uh, but pro tip, wait, that you will get a list from the school that your child will be placed at. They will send you this list of things that you have to buy. You don't have, like Annabeth was saying, you don't have to buy the books, the textbooks, workbooks. Uh, the school will all uh, provide that for you. 
um, but they will ask you to buy that calculator, which in the beginning, fortunately, is just a HEMA Casio thing <laughs> that's 10 or 15 euros, so that that's okay. But they will also ask you to buy that Atlas, the Boss Atlas, <laughs> and um, I think it's you don't have to buy that straight away. Just wait until your child actually need needs it. We bought all those dictionaries that were on the list, and I think they're still in plastic. Okay. So, <laughs> but maybe that's different. At your yeah, son's some school, but um, my daughter had all these things online, and um, so we never really needed them. But we did spend the eighty euros or something on that atlas. So yeah, yeah we still had an old atlas that we could use. And it was not the one they recommended, but it was an atlas. But it was week two of school geography. Um, it was the atlas exercise. So, uh, yeah, we really needed that. <laughs> yeah, another thing uh, most schools have is a student council. And uh, for every year group, there are a few representatives. And they talk with the management, how they think things are going and what n needs to be improved in the school. And... They ask their uh, fellow classmates uh, what they think should be improved and what they like and don't like. So they are like sort of the spokes uh, people for the students. If your child is interested in giving their opinion and improving things, then that could be a nice thing to do. And then there's a lot of differences between the schools. And the first one is maybe uh, sounds a bit strange because when they talk about school hour, they mean different things. For some schools, a school hour takes only 45 minutes, but others takes um, uh, longer, so like uh, 60 or 70 minutes, or sometimes they have a double hour or day parts. Uh, like I explained before, difference between laptop and uh, iPad. There are some schools, they have uh, different subjects and others, they have combined subjects, so uh, projects, modules. Uh, some schools, they have what they call keuze werktijd. So that means that you can choose what you're going to do for a few hours per week. Uh, so you can attend another class and maybe a different math class from a different teacher. Maybe they explain it in a different way or you can do your homework or they have an additional subject that they uh, teach that you find interesting. And there's Dalton schools, Montessori schools, and they call it Dalton hour or Montessori hour. So there's a lot of different uh, wordings for the same hours that you can choose what to do. Uh, then some schools, they also have fast lane uh, English or Cambridge English or uh, Goethe for German or Delft for French. And those are additional certificates that uh, the students who are very good at those languages can uh, get. But that's next to the uh, exams at the end of secondary school. Also, the facilities are very different. Uh, some schools are pretty old and others have a brand new building. So it also depends on what type of uh, facility you're looking for and where you feel comfortable. Some uh, schools have an after school program, so sports or orchestra or choir or Chinese class. And a lot of students, they also go to uh, sports clubs like the same way they did in primary school. Also, the population is very different. So some are more Dutch Dutch and others are more uh, international uh, minded. Some schools are uh, very big, others are much smaller. So there's a lot of differences uh, between uh, the population and the feel you get from it. And then some schools, they are uh, religious. Uh, same as for primary school, they're more religious in name than in uh, practice. But it can vary per school, so that's also important to ask uh, how that works. Also, the number of students per level uh, is very different. Some schools, maybe they have a VMBO and HAFO, uh, where most students are, but on paper they have a VWO uh, stream, but that's maybe very small. So that's also something to uh, look into. And then the standalone gymnasium schools, of course, they only have gymnasium, so they, uh, they don't look at different levels. Another thing, and I also saw uh, that some of you asked for that, the special needs support they can uh, provide. You really have to ask school directly, so with the eBay or the special needs support coordinator, what they can offer and if they work together with external parties. There is a possibility to ask for Hartheidsklausule, it's called in Dutch. 
And there is a special clause if you really think that one particular school could offer uh, what your child needs, then you could uh, ask them uh, to accept your child. It's only a very small percentage of uh, students that can be accepted that way. So, for example, at Metis uh, Montessori, they have a special class for children who have autism. So if you want your child to be in that class, then you have to apply through this uh, hardship clause. That's only for a few students, so you have to arrange that in advance and then ask uh, this exception. A lot of schools, they are part of a corporation or network or they have a certain certificate. Uh, some of those things are more like uh, marketing and uh, just some uh, sales uh, tricks. So don't buy into this too much, but some are pretty interesting. So I won't uh, read them all, but uh, so some schools, they are a uh, technasium and that is uh, getting more and more popular. And technasium, uh, that is usually on VWO and sometimes also HAVO level. And so it's the regular curriculum, but then they also offer a subject that's called uh, development and design. And then they make special uh, products or services on behalf of a real company or institution or for the school itself. So it's uh, technical. They have to work together in projects. They have to create something. It's a pretty new concept, but there's a few schools that offer Technasium. Uh, so if your child is really into uh, designing things, creating things, then that could be a good option. Some schools, they are part of uh, eco school, and that means that they try to be uh, sustainable and healthy and uh, climate neutral. So if you find that important, uh, that could be a reason to choose for school, but I wouldn't only look at that, of course. And what's also interesting is that uh, we really need people who are working in beta um, areas and beta those are the science uh, subjects and also the um, technical uh, jobs so you see um, more and more schools that are working together with the on the beta side of uh, things and what i also find interesting is that some schools are uh, cooperating with each other uh, so a new one is uh, task that is the technical VMBO school, and they will open next school year. So you can already apply for that school. I think it's very good that there's a technical VMBO because we really need a lot of technical people in Amsterdam. And most of the technical people who work in Amsterdam, they live outside of the city. And there's a big uh, lack of very good technical people. So I hope that school will be a success. It will be located in the current ACE building, so the International School Southeast Campus. They will move out and then this new school will move in there. You also see cooperation between the um, Open Schoolgemeenschap Belmer and the Southeast uh, of ACE. The OSB, they only have a small VWO section, but they, they want to be uh, open for everyone. So then they for example, the VWO students of OSB, they go to the library of ACE to borrow books in English. In that way, yeah, they can make use of a big library, and which is great, of course, for them. Emma, do you want to add anything to about corporations? No, you know, know more about that than <laughs> I do, but I really think that if your child has a VMBO at Fish, that is really interesting to look into that new um, school especially with when uh, schools like these are more or less created, you know that there will be um, going a lot of uh, funds toward it and a lot of attention so that your child will um, be able to profit from that. There is hardly any um, pupils um, graduating from a technical VMBO at this point. So look into that, really. Yeah. Some schools, they also offer, especially for the older students, the opportunity that they can follow some classes at university already. So then they need to have a cooperation with university. But that's not something uh, for the first years to look into. Most schools, they belong to a school board. And then they also do things together with the, uh, with the board or they share teachers sometimes or they try and solve the teacher shortage together. So they they also help each other in that way. And I think there will be 
some more cooperations, right, between um, Zuiderlicht and Gerrit van der Veen, for example. That's a VMBO school and a HAVO VBO school, and they are looking to create a big school that's really focused on culture, dance, drama. And I think I heard about Marcanti and Cartesius um, okay. working together because um, Cartesius is half of a will and Marcanti on paper also has half of a will, but in practice they only have a and will. So they are trying to um, start. Well, I don't know if it's going to be a new school, but at least they will um, start exchanging teachers and uh, maybe also pupils. Yeah, and another cooperation is the new uh, Metropolis Lyceum in North. They joined Fox College, the Nieuwe Havo and Bredero Beroeps uh, College. So they have all different levels then. Yeah, I went to visit them in January. It's, I found it a little bit confusing because now it's actually the old three schools are still in their last year. So and they are in the same building and then the older students, they will still finish their diploma in that school and then for the new students they will be part of Metropolis so but uh, next year they will get a new building uh, which is brand new really nice so now they're still in the old building of the Fox College it's still new but uh, it sounds very interesting uh, at least so a lot is uh, happening in this area so if you zoom into Amsterdam uh, there's 87 schools in total so that's all levels uh, combined but as you see, they're not equally distributed over the city. Uh, most schools are in the south, so 25 of them. And in Centrum, where we live, there's only uh, three options. Depending on where you live, your child might have to uh, cycle further away. And WASP now also belongs to Amsterdam officially. So, of course, this is not the right location of WASP, but otherwise they uh, would have been outside of the map. And uh, Panterij in Amstelveen also takes part with the Amsterdam Lottery. So it's the only school in Amstelveen. If you look at uh, the schools per level, so some of those schools only offer one uh, level and others combine two or three levels. So this is the options that you have. So Amsterdam is known to have a lot of students who go to HAVO and VWO. So that's where you see a lot of uh, options. Many schools, if they have VMBO, and half on VWO, and it's only VMBO T. So if uh, your child has VMBO uh, cadre or basis advice, then often it is a school with only VMBO T or basis and cadre together. There are 12 uh, special needs schools. So the regular schools, they can offer some kind of uh, support, but if a child has more severe issues are more complicated and they might be referred to a VSO school, so special needs school at secondary level. Uh, some schools, they can offer additional support to uh, students who usually for the VMBO uh, track. When I was reading the comments, a couple of your children are attending COP class and that is for children who are after group eight, they uh, are very motivated do very well in math but in their Dutch level it's not really developed yet in most cases because they don't speak Dutch at home or they move to the Netherlands at a later stage and then they can go to COP class for a very intensive one year within a small class and specialized teachers and the aim is that they get a higher advice uh, after the COP class compared to the primary school advice and there is seven locations in Amsterdam, so a bit spread out over the city that offer this COP class. But you have to apply early uh, for that. And the deadline, I think it has already passed. It has, yeah. Yeah. It was really um, popular this yeah. year. <clears throat> I think that like everything in, in Amsterdam, there are waiting lists, there are lotteries. And I think this year the, the word really spread about COP classes. So. Uh, many more children applied than that there were places for. So you need a referral from your uh, primary group acht teacher to uh, be able to apply in the first place. You can't do that as a parent. You will need to do it um, via your school. Yeah, so if your child is in group seven now, then make a note that maybe next year in February you want to apply for COP class. But maybe it's not needed. It really depends on how your child, uh, how their Dutch level is uh, compared to especially math. 
Other differences between schools, so some schools, they follow Montessori philosophy. Those are the ones that you can find here. So MLA is Montessori Lyceum Amsterdam. MLO is Montessori Lyceum Oostpoort. Uh, METIS, uh, Kim, Kim Montessori, they work together with METIS. Uh, METIS only offers HAVO and VWO and Kim VMBO, T and uh, HAVO. Uh, IFCO is an art profile school and also Montessori based. Uh, there are a couple of schools that are Dalton, so Spinoza Lyceum, Spinoza 21st and uh, Galland. In my experience, fewer differences between Montessori and Dalton in uh, secondary school compared to primary school. But often it is about independency, uh, working in projects, these few hours per week that the students can decide themselves. But every school organizes those things in a different way. So that's also something to ask. This is the last year that children from a primary Montessori school get priority for secondary Montessori school and the same for Dalton and Waldorf. Uh, from next year, that priority should uh, not exist anymore, but a lot of parents are disagreeing with that. So they signed a petition, so I'm not sure if that indeed will happen. So if your child is now not in a Montessori primary school, it's very hard to get a place that, for example, mate is. They are always full. Espinosa Lyceum is often full as well. So you can try. It's not that they only accept children from the same uh, philosophy. There's one Waldorf school, uh, Geert Grote. They also have now um, a Tiener College uh, in North. So that's for the first three years of the students who want to go to Waldorf in North. And then they go to the rest of uh, the Geert Grote College in South. Tobia School is a special needs school there also based on a Waldorf philosophy. Now then you have a couple of other schools. Interesting here is uh, Denise and Alaska. They have uh, the IB diploma program. IB is uh, International Baccalaureate Curriculum. So the same curriculum a lot of international schools follow. So they teach in English and you get an IB diploma there. So for Denise in Alaska, the first four years are in Dutch with the Dutch curriculum. And then instead of the VWO diploma, you get your IB diploma in English. Denise doesn't offer VWO at all. And Alaska has two choices, a VWO five and six year or IB fifth and six year. So that's pretty unique. Are you uh, keeping up with all the yeah, questions? Yeah, <laughs> and listening to you at the same time <laughs> before you start asking me stuff. <laughs> I'm so happy Emma is here. I couldn't okay. have done it without you. You should see the two of us here. <laughs> We're sitting underneath her son's bunk bed. <laughs> yeah, working very hard. Uh, Another difference between the schools is the size and the smallest school in Amsterdam is Gaider. That's an Orthodox uh, Jewish school and they only have uh, 36 students for the whole school together. The biggest school is where my uh, son goes to, Kalland Lyceum. They have 1625 students. That's one of the schools that I've highlighted uh, in the end. Kalland is a Dalton school and they have a technasium and they have VMBO. HAVO, VWO, gymnasium, sports profile. So my son is in the top sport class there. And they also have a culture profile. So there's a lot of options in uh, all students together is 1625. But they have separate entrance for the first year and second year students. And they have their own canteen. And most classes are in the same area. So they don't need to walk through all, the whole school with all those uh, big students. So it also depends on how the school organizes that. The advantages of bigger schools are that they often have uh, more facilities, also after school activities. They have a lot of specialized teachers who are uh, also specialized in maybe extra Dutch classes for children who don't speak Dutch at home or children who have behavioral issues or other special needs and they can share experiences and help each other. Uh, smaller schools, they will also have to offer support, but maybe they have to buy in external support then. So in the end, the students will get support, but it's a bit more difficult to arrange in that case. When you have to choose a profile, so after the third year of HAFO and VWO, Sometimes smaller schools cannot offer all the subjects for the profile or combination between different profiles. And that is easier at a bigger school as well. 
and sometimes they offer extra classes uh, that we'll see later what uh, the extra options are and the smaller schools often have more the basic classes so they have to teach all the things that are obligatory but maybe they add a fewer things on top of that uh, but there's of course also advantages of smaller schools uh, it's usually more personal everyone knows everyone else the teachers and the students all know each other and it's easier to find your way especially in the first year it's easier for the students to get used to everything sometimes they also have smaller classes at smaller schools but that's not always the case uh, but that's something to ask as well when you visit the school and yeah for the school management it's often easier to manage a smaller school so with the bigger schools they often have coordinators for all first year students and and then for every year they have coordinators and then they often have what they call underbouw and bovenbouw so the first three years and the last three years and they have coordinators and they have supervisors and it's uh, complicated uh, also for the parents to figure out whom do I talk to here it depends Depends on what you uh, prefer. Emma, maybe could you explain about the uh, standalone gymnasium schools and the difference between the five? Okay, so, well, there are 17 schools where you can do Latin and Greek. I guess some of them uh, offer gymnasium on paper mostly. Not all of them. There are schools like Amsterdam's Lyceum, Spinoza Lyceum and Montessori Lyceum who are actually um, offering a full uh, gymnasium class so you're safe to choose them if your child wants to uh, study latin or greek i'm not too sure about some of the other schools it may be that there are only a couple of children choosing gymnasium and i have no idea about the quality of um, that stream in that case about the uh, five gymnasium schools three of them have been here for years and sometimes even centuries. Barleus, Fossius and Ignatius, they are well-established schools and they were really full about 15 years ago. So um, these three gymnasia decided to um, open two more to um, relieve the pressure a bit and that's uh, Cygnus and the Vierde Gymnasium. By now they are established schools as well. They've been around for a long time and um, there's no difference in education between the five at this point, if you look at the graduation um, statistics and everything, they have the same grades, they have the same percentage of uh, pupils um, graduating in six years. So it's basically what school do you like best? Do you like the building? Do you like the, whatever they have to offer in extracurriculars? It's more about that because uh, all these schools, they offer the, the same courses, but they all have extras that you don't get at one of the other schools. I can only uh, speak for the Vierde Gymnasium because that's where my daughter goes and I sort of forgot what it was at the other schools. But um, at the Vierde, you get astronomy, you get um, in the first year. So that's really nice introduction into uh, physics, chemistry and um, higher level math work. And my daughter really enjoyed that. It's one of the reasons that she's now going to choose a beta profile in year four. But they offer um, drama, as a uh, graduation uh, subject and also film, which is a really interesting course. Not many schools offer film as a uh, end examen course. I think it's really interesting. It's a mandatory subject in the first three years, and it's not that they just make uh, little movies or that they watch movies. It's more that they try and dissect um, commercials and um, they see what's happening on TikTok and how they are influenced and how marketing is working. So it's it's much more than just watching uh, old movies or whatever. So I think that's that's one of the perks of um, a school like at Vierde, like a, a categorical school where they only offer this, that they can actually um, hire teachers to offer courses like this. So that's really interesting. But all these schools have extras. It's not just um, the gymnasia, the, uh, the scholengemeenschappen also have the means to offer interesting courses because they have a lot of pupils. In my opinion, one of the disadvantages of a standalone gymnasium is that when students don't pass the first year, they have to leave the school uh, because that's the only thing they have, gymnasium. 
or if they lose their interest in uh, Latin and ancient Greek, they either have to uh, change schools or they just have to keep on going with those subjects. Yeah, there is no possibility to drop the subject. You have to um, graduate with Latin or Greek if you go to a standalone gymnasium. So when I was in uh, secondary school, I first attended gymnasium and then I was done with Greek and Latin and I dropped both of them and I have an Ateneum diploma. So um, same here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I was happy I had that option. Uh, the advantage is that uh, you are in the class with students who have the same interests, who want to work hard and study a lot. So it can be very motivating. Personally, I prefer a school that has different levels, uh, so different types of students from different backgrounds, so that they all meet each other, they learn from each other, they spend time together, they do things together. And you don't have that at a gymnasium because it's all gymnasium students, so a bit similar profile students. It depends on how you deal with that. And then I believe the fourth gymnasium, they are uh, more mixed than most other gymnasium schools, yeah. right? I think that Cygnus <clears throat> and Vierda, yeah, Cygnus as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. They actively try and attract different uh, students with, from different backgrounds and I get that that's more difficult for um, Vosius and Ignatius and also for Berleus because of the where they are located. It's just they are in really affluent areas and so that's the kind of um, pupils they attract. Yeah. But I really must insist that the results of all five schools are the exact same. So I think that the, the mixed um, population in, uh, in the Tvierde and in Cygnus really are a good thing yeah 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 i think so too like uh, emma mentioned before so some of the other schools that also have a gymnasium department it can be that the gymnasium department is very small there so that's something to uh, inquire as well so i know about kaland they also have gymnasium it's only a few stu students and they combine gymnasium with technasium which i think is a very clever combination so remember for Technasium, they have to create products and services. One of the things they've done is they built an app in Latin for students of medical school. And so especially those students who didn't go to gymnasium, so who didn't study Latin, so to help them with the medical terms. And then you really put Latin in practice, which is funny because it's that language. But then in this way, it uh, gets more alive. But I wouldn't choose Galant for the gymnasium, to be honest. Then there's some other standalone schools. So the Amsterdam's Lyceum and Hyperion, they only have uh, VWO, so both at Ateneum and Gymnasium. Then there's one standalone HAVO school, so HAVO de Hof in the uh, east. And then there's a couple of schools, they uh, only offer VMBO, so different levels. And then practical education is on the job training often combined with uh, internships, and that's called Praktijk Onderwijs. And they also have a couple of schools that's only Praktijk Onderwijs and other schools combined with VMBO. A new school here is Juwerta, and they combine VMBO and MBO, so different buildings, but they work a lot together, and you can seamless stream from VMBO to the MBO school. So that's also a way to get more professionals in the areas of agriculture, climate, water, a lot of green and sustainability products and services. I think interesting development, what we really need, especially in Amsterdam. Then there are uh, some schools that combine different levels in the bridge class. So in the beginning, we already talked about bridge class or brug class. So this is the list of schools they have a VMBO, HAVO, VWO combination in the first year, but also in the second and sometimes in the third year. And that is pretty unique. So that's especially for children who uh, or maybe don't know exactly which stream is the best fitting uh, option for them. And then after that, so if, if they have a combined two-year Brug class, then in the third year they go to either VMBO or HAVO or VWO. In other schools, they uh, maybe have a first year Brug class. So the schools mentioned here uh, have three levels combined for multiple years. 
And then there's also some schools, they have a, a two level bridge class, but then for two or three years. So that's usually VMBOT and HAVO together or HAVO and VWO together. A uh, lot of schools have those combinations in the first year, but these schools on this list for uh, two or three years. Some of your children, they might have uh, received a combined advice. So HAVO slash VWO advice. So it's a bit of in-between solution. So then in most schools, you can choose which class you want to join. And if they have a combined half hour slash VWO class, then uh, that could be a good place. But when it's only standalone VWO school, you cannot enter there with a half hour slash VWO school. So then you need to have a VWO advice. And my son is in one of those uh, half hour slash VWO classes. And then for most tests, he gets two grades. So one grade for half hour and one for VWO. And then at the end of the bridge period, they check your average and then they advise which direction is the most appropriate one. So that postpones the streaming process. You see some schools that, especially the newer schools like uh, Alaska, that have a bridge class for more years. The MLA, the Montessori Lyceum, they are building a new campus near Eiburg. And that's a bit different that they also combine multiple levels for a longer time. So the old MLA is more traditional and then the new MLA is with the combination of the classes. Also interesting in this list, Berlage. So that is uh, the only school in Amsterdam that's completely bilingual. So for HAVO and VWO, they all have classes in English and in Dutch. The end exams are all in Dutch. So after the third year, they switch back to mostly uh, Dutch. So that is very important to know. And that's also a question that gets asked often. But now Berlage, they have a new world class that they are starting next school year. And then they combine HAVO and VWO together for three years. And it's more focused on the internationalization and working in project groups. So it's a different class within the school. And then after the third year, then the students go to either AFO or VWO. So for three years, they stay together in this world class. And Gerard van der Veen does a similar thing with their uh, Kunst Plus, so Art Plus class. So they are already art profile school, but they have some additional art classes in this uh, Kunst Plus class. Question from Katrien. Yes, when there's different levels in the school, so you have half on VWO, then often they have a VWO class, a half class, and then a combined half slash VWO class. So that's a bit of a mix, especially for students who don't exactly know uh, which is the best final uh, stream for them. If that's for two years, then in the third year, you go to three half or three VWO. So uh, in the end, it's the same as the other students in free half or free VWO, but you have spent two years in a, this mixed class. Yeah, but the question is, if if you have VWO at Fries and you arrive in a mixed Brug class, what will happen with the VWO at Fries if you don't score on a VWO level in that Brug class? Do you lose the VWO at Fries if you're streamed again? I don't know the answer to Yeah, no, I, I don't think you lose it. What I see in my son's class is that the students who have uh, VWO advice, they get to take additional questions at the test. You get two uh, grades for half and for VWO, and they have to score on average of the VWO uh, grades. Every school does a bit different. But in theory, if you have VWO advice and you don't study very hard, it could be that you are... Uh, ending up at HAVO, but that can also happen if you are in a VWO class and then not passing or have a low average, then you can also go back to HAVO. So it doesn't only depend on this combination uh, class. So we already talked about uh, TTO in uh, relation to Berlage. So there are some other schools that have a bilingual department. And that means that they have other departments as well, and bilingual is uh, one of them. I've put uh, Denise and Alaska between brackets because only in the fifth and the sixth year they have classes in English. Now, Technasium we talked about, it's also a few schools that offer that. Uh, some schools have uh, sports profiles. Uh, my son's school, Kaland, that's the most uh, sporty school in the whole country. And they have a lot of additional sports and also top sports class. 
uh, that's especially for students who have this uh, special status. And then you have special arrangements with the school attendance uh, officials. And my son, he passed a sports test as only a, a few students could. And then they can join those uh, professional sports, which is really, he's extremely happy there because playing soccer was the only thing he wanted to do in basic school choice. Huh? As I was asking here, <clears throat> about the sport profile. So they, it's special arrangements with the sports clubs. Uh, so they uh, start later in the morning uh, with, with school so the children can go to their sports club in the morning. And then they're often picked up from school and brought to their sports club again for the afternoon session. And then they have uh, more hours of sports in school and that's often at a higher level and also more technical and they, um, yeah, every school arranges that a bit differently, but my son also has a, a class that's called uh, TTA, that is Top Sport Talent and Attitude. And then they also learn about how to deal with losing a game, how to give feedback uh, to each other, but also about healthy food, uh, good sleep. They spend fewer hours in school, they have to do more themselves at home, so how to deal with that. So that's a special class that the other students don't have. But that varies per school. And then there's also some schools so like uh, Kim and HLZ, so the Hervormd Lyceum Zuid. They have more sports classes, uh, usually in the morning to start the day with. For HLZ, it's the Universalis Profile. So there's not official sports profile, but they do more sports than uh, the average schools do. Some schools have a culture profile. So we already talked about Gert van der Veen and IFCO. And there's also Media College. They do more about... Uh, media studies and design and uh, things like that. Spinoza, Kalant again, and they have almost everything. Finse School, I've put between brackets because they, they do a lot of art things, but they're not official culture profile school. But it depends on what your child wants to do and maybe this is already enough. So the Gerard van der Veen, they also have a special dance class. So the, the students who are professional dancers, they can go to school and uh, practice their dance at the same time. Yeah, and the musicians as well. The musicians, children who are in yeah. the uh, uh, conservatorium studying uh, yeah. an instrument, they also go to um, Gerrit van der Veen or Zuiderlicht. Yeah. They are in a special separate class with a separate uh, schedule. A few schools that have a special program for gifted students. That was also a question of uh, some of you. So Fons Vite has a special uh, program for that. Uh, Hyperion and also Cygnus and uh, Alaska. So if your child is uh, gifted or advanced, then maybe that could be uh, interesting to look into. And then the special class at Metis we talked about earlier, so for children uh, who are on the spectrum. But you have to ask special uh, permission for that. If anything to add? Um... Well, about gifted students, I think that um, most of the, um, the, the larger schools at least give the opportunity to um, graduate earlier in some of the uh, subjects. We have uh, my daughter has a, um, a a friend in school who already skipped a class in primary and is now um, doing Wiskunde B and Philosophy um, end examen this year and they are in year three. My daughter is not like this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, for children who really need the challenge, I think that most of the larger schools can accommodate that even if they don't have a gifted class or a gifted profile uh, on their website. There are some specialty schools, uh, which in Dutch is called Vakschool, and they require a special uh, selection procedure or a portfolio or something uh, special that you have to do to enter them. In most cases, the intake is in the uh, beginning of February, so it's uh, too late for this year. And only if you have passed the selection procedure, you may put them on your uh, lottery list. And otherwise, uh, these schools don't uh, pop up. So that's for students who are really very enthusiastic in arts or music or Hubertus Berghoff, that's a culinary and hospitality specialist school, Media College for the Media. So it can be very interesting if your child is uh, into that. If we look at the subjects that are compulsory for the lower grade, so that's the first three years, then all schools have to offer Dutch language and literature English, math, 
and later on you get different types of math but in the beginning it's it's just called Wiskun, so just the same math for everyone two other uh, foreign languages so besides english most schools offer german and french but there are some schools that offer spanish or some other uh, languages and then instead of often German, because that's a bit less popular language uh, currently. So in gymnasium, they have to offer Latin and ancient Greek. So for the standalone gymnasium schools, it's common that they start with Latin in the first year and then add Greek in the second year. But that's not always the case. When schools have a, um, a combined bridge class for HAFO and uh, VWO, then often they start offering Latin as an option in the second year to uh, the students who want to go to VWO and then gymnasium. So also this varies uh, per school. And then they have to offer uh, history, geography, uh, social studies or citizenship. The name they give to that is different world orientation or, but they have to learn about uh, our society and uh, how we all function together. Biology, uh, physics, chemistry. A lot of schools combine that and it's called NASC, which is the NA for Natuurkunde, which is physics and SK for chemistry, scheikunde. Economy is often added in the third year. They also have to learn about IT and computer science, but every school does that also in a bit different way. And then technology, it also varies per school how they exactly offer that. And then also the creative subjects, visual, fine art, drawing, music, drama, dance. Often they have blocks of a few months that they teach fine art and then another block of music. Also this depends on the school. They have to offer basic, but it really varies how they offer that. And some schools, they have the possibility to take your end exams in music or drawing, for example, or drama, but that's not very common. Physical education is for all years, for all uh, schools, but some offer that at a higher level or more hours per week than other schools do. But there has to be some exercise and uh, movement uh, for everyone. In the end, there are 58 uh, core objectives or attainment targets. So that is what the Ministry of Education has decided upon and the schools have to carry that out, but they have a lot of freedom how and when and what they offer, but they have to prove that all those 58 uh, core objectives are covered. And then a lot of schools, they, and especially the, the newer schools, they say, okay, we have those core objectives, but we don't necessarily have to offer every subject separately. So why not combine uh, history and uh, geography, for example, or what I talked about earlier, uh, physics and uh, chemistry, or in some schools uh, like the Ignatius uh, Gymnasium, they have what they call um, X8. I'm not sure how they pronounce it, but it's a combination of biology, math, physics, chemistry. And then you, for example, you have to solve a murder mystery and they get to analyze uh, fake blood, for example, and then learn about body parts and where something is going wrong and have to calculate uh, things. So they really combine different uh, skills and subjects. And you see more and more schools that they uh, teach by theme or project in which they combine those subjects that changes after a few weeks or months, depending on how they do that. There are schools that have special subjects. So Emma already talked about uh, astronomy. That's pretty unique for the uh, Vierde Gymnasium. Some schools, they teach uh, philosophy, and often that also includes uh, debating, so giving your opinion and then convincing others. Some schools teach uh, Spanish, and uh, other schools, they offer the certificate for Cambridge, uh, so for English or French or German. A few schools teach uh, Russian or Arabic or Chinese. Uh, Kaland has a language by choice. It's a pilot project, but that students can choose, take their exams in a language, often language they speak at home, but that includes a lot of self-study, so it's not uh, for beginners. And then uh, the Waldorf schools, they have more uh, arts and crafts and textile. And so that's typical for the Waldorf schools, woodwork and uh, with wool and felt and, uh, and those things. And Malay also has a fashion uh, class. So with textile, uh, 
which is uh, pretty unique, I think. Metis is very special also because they have a coder class. So it's a lot about coding and programming. And they uh, also offer uh, robotics. And some uh, other schools, they also have uh, robotics classes. So that's, that's just extra things on top of the obligatory uh, curriculum. Yeah, COP class we already talked about actually. ISK is often confused with uh, COP class, but uh, the difference is that ISK is for newcomers at secondary yeah. levels, so from age 12 to 18, who have recently moved to the Netherlands and don't speak any Dutch or only just a little bit of Dutch. And COP class is for uh, children who have been in Dutch primary school, so who already have good level of Dutch, but not enough to immediately go to a higher level of secondary school. So there's a clear difference uh, between the two. And ISK is only in two uh, schools. So Montessori really same Oostport and Mundus. After six weeks of Mundus, if a child has a uh, half hour VWO level, then they can transfer to Denise. And Mundus only offers uh, VMBO. Okay, that is a complicated matter and new for a lot of you, but also for the Dutch parents who don't live in Amsterdam. This is really uh, very different than what they're used to. So the basic principle is that uh, there are enough schools in Amsterdam. They have enough places, but there are some schools that are very popular and there are other schools that are half empty. And for that reason, a lot of schools were always oversubscribed and they cannot expand or they don't want to expand that discussion that I will leave here. But that's why you have to take part in a lottery. Uh, it depends on the advice that your child got. So for a VMBO, basis and cadre, so B or K, you have to list four schools. For VMBO T, uh, six schools and 12 schools for HAVO or BWO. You have to put them in order of your preference, which is not easy, especially with 12 schools. Then you have to submit a form that you will uh, you will get an email from ELK. So ALK, that's a platform. Maybe you have already. No, I don't think they've sent it yet around the 24th of uh, February. And then you log into the portal between uh, March 6 and 16. It doesn't matter when you submit your form, but please be in time before the 16th of March. And then you order the schools. Of course, you hope you will get a place at your first school, but you don't know that until the 6th of April. And all students, they get a number. And this number you will only see at the moment that you log in to see the school where your child has been placed. So you don't know the number in advance. It's an automated computer system, so it's completely random. So they first look at the child who is, uh, who is so lucky to have number one. And of course, there's a place always at their first school of preference. But maybe at child number 1000, the first school is full. And then they look at the second school on their list. And if there's no place there, then they look at the third school and so on. It is important to know that there is a placement guarantee, which means that if a child cannot be placed at any school on their list, so the 12 schools uh, for HAFO and VWO, the schools that are high on the list, so the most popular schools, they're asked to add some extra places. And then for those children who ended up with no school or very low school, they try to place them as high as possible on their list. So you always get a school that was on your list. It's a complicated procedure. There is um, VSA, that's a foundation for free school choice in Amsterdam. That's a group of parents that uh, a few years ago didn't get a very good outcome through the lottery. And they have been very active since to help other parents and talk with the school boards and the municipality and everyone. On the website of the VSA, you will find a lot of information and also discussions and you can ask questions there as well. Uh, on YouTube, there is a man called Jan Smit and he is also involved with the VSA. And he has recorded some videos about the lottery and also the strategy. So which school to put on your list and on which place? I think Emma wants to say something about that as well, right? About yeah. how to fill the lottery form, because I can imagine that is yeah. um, one of the uh, main questions tonight. 
let's start with uh, the question that Katrin is just asking. Uh, no, there was one before and it said, if you don't hand in the form in time or you don't send it in in time, what will happen? Well, what will happen is that um, there's only schools left that can still offer you a place and those aren't necessarily uh, schools that you want your child to go to. Not that they are bad schools, but they are not the ones that would have been on your list. And the other question, the second round of the lottery, well, that's actually the same answer. The second round of the lottery, if you're not satisfied with whatever happened um, in the first round, still only gives you access to schools that still have places left. I never really understand why people would go for a second round, um, just place the schools that you want your child to go to in the, in the on the form in the first round mm. and you won't get into that situation. Another question. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, if you live in Amstelveen, can you do the lottery in both Amstelveen and Amsterdam? Well, that's kind of a sensitive topic because children in Amstelveen can still participate in both lotteries as far as I know, but not the other way around. If you're in Amstelveen, you're um, pretty lucky. <laughs> and um, if you are in Amsterdam and you have your eyes set on an Amstelveen school, you might get in or maybe not. Want a right takes part in the Amsterdam Lottery yeah. while they are in Amstelveen. Do we mention gymnasium or Atheneum? Um, well, some of the schools um, have a separate gymnasium class like MLA, Pinoza. Spinoza. Well, there are a few where you can actually choose gymnasium in a brede scholengemeenschap, as it's called. And you can choose um, Atheneum and gymnasium on your list, but they count as one school. So imagine your child has VBO advice. You have to choose 12 schools. You choose MLA Gymnasium and MLA Atheneum just to make sure if you don't get into the one, you will get the other. Then you have to add a 13th school on the list or a 13th stream. So MLA Gymnasium and uh, uh, MLA Atheneum count as one school. So make sure you actually fill in all the schools that you have to to yeah. get. placement guarantee yeah and uh, the same applies to for example the coder class at metis so, so every school can only have two listings so you have coder class or the um, the no, yeah, technasium is separate. So coder yeah. class or the culture profile, and then later you can tell them which one is your preference. And technasium is separate from that. Yeah. So you have to list Metis then twice, but then you need a 13th uh, school because you need to have 12 different schools. Yeah. And the same is with the St. Nicolas uh, bilingual, so the TTO department. That's also separate. So you can put also the regular class. Question from Katrien, is there a limit to how many schools you can list? No, in, if you choose all the schools that have double listings, then you can end up with a list of 24 schools. That doesn't happen so often. But So just make sure you have 12 different school names on your list. I think that there is a, a warning, actually. If you choose um, the same school twice, I think they tell you to add another school. Yeah. I think they will. They warn you. Yeah. It's been three years for me, so I don't really. Yeah, no, they. I uh, think they, they give a warning. Yeah, you can form. see that you have not completed the form yet. So that is uh, good that they did that. Before it was digital, uh, you had to hand in physical form, and then more parents made the mistake of not listing enough schools. So that's almost impossible now. And then with children have a double advice, so HAVO or VWO, it also depends on the school. So some schools, they automatically put you in a HAVO slash VWO class and others ask you, would you like to enter class at the highest level or the lower level of your double advice? So first you pick the school and then they will ask you which class. So take your time to fill in this form. Yeah, and there are separate forms for every advice so and the system already knows your child's advice so you only get that one so it's not that you can yeah. choose from VMBO schools if you have a VBO advice or that you can choose VBO if you have a HAVO advice you just get the one that the advice that you uh, that you got in group 8 is the form that will be sent to you there is not much confusion once you open the the portal well and I think that some of the you would like to know how do I fill in the form? <laughs> is there a loophole to get my number one school? Well, there is no loophole really, but there are 
couple of things that you can just fine tune your form with to make sure that you don't miss out on your well favorite schools <laughs> not school but schools <laughs> so um but Annabeth and I were telling each other over dinner she invited me over for dinner at her house which was really nice <laughs> thank you <laughs> But um, we were discussing that and how to fill in that form, because that's just the most anxiety inducing thing you can do um, this year, I think. First thing you need to know is that please, at the top of your list, place your favorite schools. Put Barleyes on top just because everyone wants to go there and you want to make sure that you get it or only put a school like that on top of your list if you actually, if your child actually wants to go there if that's the favorite school so start your list with your favorite schools and only by the time you get to well i don't really care if it's this school or this school that's where you can start and strategize a little so let's see maybe you have six schools that you really like place those schools in the order that are true true preferences and just your your one to six. It, I mean, I'm just taking six schools as an example now. It, maybe you have 12 favorite schools. Well, then you're set. That's really nice. <laughs> maybe you only have one and then yeah. you have a problem. Yeah. Okay, let's say you have six schools that you like equally or that you really like. Then the bottom six, you need schools there. And you could, of course, just place whatever school there and just hope that you don't get one of these. Or you could put the really popular oversubscribed schools there to make sure that they are, how am I explaining this? They will be full by the time, let's start at the beginning. Your child has a really bad lottery number. <laughs> Your first five schools or six schools on the form are already full by the time they pick up your child's um, form. You need to make sure that if you have a bad lottery number and you don't know that in advance, but if there's a bad lottery number, as you place schools there that will already be full, just like the first five or six schools that were full, but not schools that you necessarily want to go to, but that are already full, because there is something in Amsterdam called plaatsingsgarantie, which means that if you have 12 schools on your form that are all full by the time that your child it's your child's turn, they will start looking at the top of the forms to see if they can place another chair there, as they call it. So they keep a couple of seats open for children who are left without any school because all 12 schools are full. And so those uh, videos by Jan Smit I was talking about, he explains the strategy behind that. So there are some schools that based on past year lotteries, they are not full. So if you put one of those schools on your list, then it's very likely you will get a place there. So if you don't like this particular school, then you shouldn't put it on your list. So if you put schools that are yeah, usually oversubscribed, there's no guarantee for this year, but that are usually oversubscribed on your list, and there's 12 of them, then they have to place you at one school higher on the list, so in your top uh, schools. But if you have a school that is still available and you put it at number 12, then it's pretty likely you will get that school, so number 12. So that is how it works, but you can play around a bit with that. I did hear of some parents, they thought they were clever and they put uh, schools that actually their children didn't want to go to on the list and then the child did get that place. Don't do that. Only put schools on your list where your child wants to go to. So no gymnasium. Yeah. If your child really doesn't want to do yeah. that, then we're good. Because there's nothing worse than ending up at your uh, number 10 school because they suddenly have a place and it's Ignatius and you don't even want to go there. So, yeah. yeah. And that and it happens. That happened, yeah. And I saw a question in the chat about postcode. No. Uh, that doesn't matter where you live. So all children in Amsterdam and the surrounding towns, they have the same priority. But don't make yourself go nuts about it because you cannot influence it. You have no idea what number your child will get. And uh, in practice, most children in the end are happy with the school that they get. Even if it's number 10, they get used to it usually. So I always say the lottery is equally unfair for everyone. Yeah, it's the best system they could get up with, but it's not ideal. Yeah, it is already 10 o'clock. So if you have to leave, I understand. I will send the recording and the slides uh, to everyone who signed up.
and I just promised to um, write out what I just tried to say. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to uh, stay, then uh, you're very welcome to. What we're going to do is a few schools that I uh, wanted to highlight just to show you in practice how that works with uh, all the things we talked about. Hopefully it becomes a bit more tangible for you then. So the first school is Fons Vite. Uh, that has been the most popular school for the past few years. And it is one of the oldest schools of Amsterdam or maybe of the whole country even. Originally they are Catholic, but yeah, they call themselves open Catholic. I don't think they do anything related to religion anymore. A part of the building, they unfortunately lost that to a fire a few years ago, and then they had to rebuild it. So it's a very interesting combination of old and new and uh, traditional and modern building. They offer HAFO and BWO and also uh, gymnasium. So you can choose a first year uh, to go in a HAFO uh, VWO combined class or the students who have VWO advice, they can go to a dedicated VWO uh, class. Their uh, school hour takes uh, 60 minutes, so that is uh, easier to calculate with. It's more difficult when it's 45 or 70 minutes, for example. And that's another difference between the schools. So some schools, they have regular tests throughout the year. And other schools just have a few tests uh, throughout the year and then they have a couple of test weeks, as they call them, so three or four per year. And then they have in those test weeks two or three tests per day. And then after the test, they are done, so they uh, have no other classes anymore in that week. And uh, I think there's pros and cons to uh, both methods. But so Fons Vite has uh, often test week and then they have special classes uh, so talent development. So they have some additional classes for that and also philosophy, uh, Cambridge exam after school. So it's for English. So in addition to the uh, end exam and they have the special profile for gifted students. So they have 1095 students. So it's a bit bigger than average for Amsterdam oh, and a mix of books and uh, laptops. So of course, there's a, a lot of things to tell about the school, but this is are the main differences with the other schools. Then uh, St. Nicolas is also a popular school. They're also in uh, the south of Amsterdam, but then uh, close to the south us. And they also have HAFO and Ateneum. They used to have gymnasium, but uh, not anymore for first year students. So the previous gymnasium students, they can still take their exams, but they don't take new students anymore. They're also open Catholic, but I haven't heard anything religious about them. Their building is pretty modern. They have 1,200 students so they are bigger than a lot of other schools and their school hour takes 50 minutes so that's another difference if you're interested in this school then there's different options so for HAFO you can choose the regular HAFO slash VWO class or the bilingual so the TTO class and if you have Ateneum then you can choose for the regular Ateneum or Ateneum Sport Plus so that's only for Ateneum and not for half of students, or you can choose the Ateneum bilingual class. Here you will find a lot of options pop up when you select St. Nicolas. They also have a mix of books and laptops, and they also have four test weeks and a lot of projects as well. So the TTO that stops after the third year, but then they still have international streams. So they teach mainly in Dutch, but they have some international subjects and uh, they learn a lot about other countries as well. So Metis, we already talked about a bit, and I think most things I've already mentioned. So schools can only have two listings, so they couldn't have three for Technasium and uh, art and coder class so now they have combined art and coder class uh, that's something you have to pay attention to they are montessori school so if your child is not a montessori primary school this year it will be very difficult from next year most likely uh, you have better chances but make sure to understand what they do in terms of montessori and if that suits your child or not the fourth gymnasium, Emma has already explained a lot of things about them. Is there anything you would like to add? I'm still just really happy <laughs> with the school. The thing that I really liked, if I can compare it with other schools that um, my daughter's friends went to, and they've gone everywhere from Cygnus to Amsterdam to Arleus, well, everything really, is that there's a lot of hand-holding still in the first year. 
and what I really liked about it is that the children are in their home room, as they call it, for the first couple of months. So they don't change classrooms like in other schools. They have their own home room that they get to decorate. So it's just really homely and warm feeling. So they're just there with their own class and the teachers come to them instead of them going to teachers. So it's a, it's a really soft landing. That's and, very um, unique. Yeah, yes. and um, that helped a lot, I think, with the transition from primary to secondary. But then there's another five years to go. So we are in year three now and um, no regrets so far. And they mainly use books, right? So not much laptop, it's tablet. Hardly ever. Yeah. So that's another difference with some schools. Uh, Lily asked, so how did you decide which schools to profile here? I looked at the schools that a lot of the participants in this webinar listed when they registered. So a lot of these schools are popular, so you probably have heard of them, but don't really know exactly what they do. And also some different types of schools to make you understand what the differences are, what you could look out for. But there are many other good schools that I have not highlighted. So those were my criteria. But don't restrict your view by only those schools and uh, look for the others as well. Uh, Hyperion is a new school. They are in the north. A very remarkable of this school is the big slide from the second floor to the ground floor. And especially the first year students, they really like to slide and then when they got older, then like, ah, oh, it's only for the small kids and it's <laughs> not that popular anymore. They only have Atheneum and Gymnasium, so you need to have a video advice for that. Yeah, the school hour is 45 minutes, but they have a lot of what they call block hours. So then two classes of the same subject attached to each other. So then you have 90 minutes and it gives you a bit more time to explain things more in detail or that the students already uh, do their homework during class. And at the end of the first year, then they have the split between uh, Atheneum and Gymnasium. They say that they have Atheneum Plus, so they offer some uh, extra subjects on top of the obligatory subjects. They have some programs for enrichment classes or more challenges. So there are some different uh, options within uh, the regular program. And they call it modern education. So it's a bit different from the traditional schools we saw before. And then they have some special classes. So they don't only teach uh, the classical languages, so Latin and Greek, but also classical development. They have philosophy. Spanish. Special subjects that, that, that's very unique for them is logics and argumentation. So sort of debating and philosophy of argumentation. Lifestyle, informatics, science, uh, big thinkers. And the Bureau V, that's for the gifted students. I would also call it a bit of marketing, but yeah, they are classes that you don't find in other schools. So that's a combination of different subjects. The next school is Spinoza 21st. They are a spin-off of the Spinoza Lyceum. They moved this school year into a brand new building. So they had a temporary building, but now they are close to Spacklerweg metro station. It's a sustainable building and it's very wide set up, very spacious. A lot of areas where the students can sit and study or uh, work in, uh, in groups. It's also sustainable uh, materials that they use to build the building. And they uh, work with uh, what they call domains of learning. So for example, they have the domain of humans and society that includes economy, history, geography, philosophy, social studies. Then there's another domain, nature and technology, and that includes biology, chemistry, physics, and research. They cover a lot of things in domains, and then they have to make products. And a product can be that they take a test, but it can also be that they have to record a video about a certain uh, topic or write a blog or they have to do research. So the product can be different for every domain. And that is also a new concept. And so they have VMBOT, HAVO and Atheneum, so they don't have a gymnasium. And the first two or three years, they mix all the levels in uh, one class. And then they have a core class of 15 students and then they break down in different classes and project groups so with students from other core classes. So they do a lot with projects. So when you're done with your project, you have to submit it. So you get a schedule of by when you have to submit which task and you can decide yourself when you do what together with your project group. You have an individual coach, you're not a mentor for the whole class, but there's a few individual coaches per class and you talk with them about what you have already accomplished and difficulties that you have. 
so there are some differences between the Spinoza 21st and Spinoza Lyceum. So they belong to the same school board and they're both a Dalton school. But Spinoza 21st is more focused on independency, taking your responsibility, and you have more freedom to create your own schedule and your own uh, projects. And the Spinoza Lyceum is a bit more traditional and they have a similar schedule uh, for most of the days. Spinoza Lyceum, they're more focused on arts and and drama and music that Spinoza 21st doesn't really have so much. Oh yeah, and they do most things on the iPad and laptop. So the advantage is that they don't have a heavy bag to carry with all the books. Yeah, some students really like it. They have everything online and easily accessible. But some other students, they feel that they are too easily distracted by all other things happening on their laptop or iPad. So that is something to look into as well. Montessori Lyceum Amsterdam, they're the biggest Montessori school. They're being renovated, so they're close to uh, Museum Square. And two of their buildings, they have been torn down and they get new buildings eventually. So they're now a bit spread out over different uh, temporary locations. Simultaneously, they're building the Sluisbuurt, so near Eiburg, called MLA number two. Maybe eventually it will get its own unique name. They will have two different philosophies. Uh, so it will be still Montessori, but it's a bit more modern teaching style at a new location. And they have a lot of classes of 55 minutes, but then a lot of individual independent working time. And then they combine students of different classes in project groups. So that's this Montessori independency that you will see here. They have VMBOT, HAVO, Atheneum and Gymnasium. And I believe that in uh, the Sluisbuurt location that they will not have Gymnasium, but I'm not entirely sure about that. And they use a mix of books and laptops. And in the new building, they're going to have a pilot with Bring Your Own Device, so more digital. This is also a pretty big school, so 1830 students. So that's all the locations combined not in the same building. And they have a culture profile as well. So they have a lot of things on offer, which could be interesting if Montessori is your thing. The Amsterdam's Lyceum is also very popular. They only offer VWO, so Gymnasium and Atheneum. They are the oldest Lyceum of the Netherlands. So it's also a lot about tradition and the building has a lot of character. What's unique about them is that they also teach uh, Spanish and Italian. And especially Italian, you don't see in many... I don't think there's other schools that offer Italian, right? No, I think that's no. an Amsterdam Lyceum. Yeah, that's very unique. I'll go through it a bit quicker because I see it's already very late. Now, Kalant, I've already taught uh, some things about. I think it's an interesting option for the sports profile for Technasium. Without those profiles, we wouldn't have chosen the school because it's very far from us. It's about 35 minutes by bike and for normal school you wouldn't do that but if you're interested in one of those profiles then it can be worth it and they're a very diverse school which i really like as well alaska is also a new school we already talked a bit about them as well so what's unique of them is that they combine half the Ateneum all together for three years and then like we explained before in year five and six you can also choose to follow the international baccalaureate in english which is very unique and here you can also study spanish which not many schools offer and it work a lot on the laptop so that's something you have to choose for as well and what's also unique about them is that they combine different subjects and then they have teachers for those different subjects together. So then you will see a class of about 60 students with two teachers and they each explain their point of view and their part of the theme. And after that, they break out in project groups and they do a lot of research. So this big class is only for one and a half hours or so, and then they have smaller groups again. They were first called Cartesius II, and then they changed names and now they're Alaska. And since then they became much more popular and they do lots about internationalization and extra English as well. Denise, uh, they belong to the same school board as Alaska so you will find some similarities so also at Denise you can study IB in the fifth or sixth years but they don't have VWO so if you want to do VWO in Dutch then Denise is not a good option they combine in the first three years VMBO half on VWO and then they go into different directions so that's also pretty unique of them and they are a language friendly school which means that they encourage the students to keep developing their home language and if there's 
there's another child who speaks your language, you're allowed to speak that language during class, of course, without disturbing the other children. But if another child can explain something more easily to you in Arabic or French or Japanese, then that is fine. You may also use your dictionary if you don't understand the Dutch word. So they are more open to that and it's a language friendly network that they are part of. Uh, another thing that's unique about Denise is that they're the only school that has, or only Dutch school I should say, that has primary and secondary in the same building. So the ground floor is primary and then the top floors are secondary. The children from the primary school, they get priority. This is the last school I want to highlight. It's in Zahir Lely, they're in the southeast. They have from VMBOT up to gymnasium. They also have technasium and they have bilingual and they work a lot with projects. So there's a lot of choice there. The technasium is pretty new, so it's brand new equipment and everything. And they have a cooperation with the Fossius Gymnasium. I think it was the Greek teacher, right, from Fossius who yeah. set up the gymnasium department there. And they were actually oversubscribed last year. Yeah, that's very impressive as yeah. well. Uh, they are really increasing in uh, popularity. They focus a lot on uh, global citizenship, so uh, a lot of different nationalities and they learn about different cultures and everything uh, international. So it could be an uh, interesting school as well to look into. This year, I'm not sure, but they used to be the fastest growing school of Amsterdam, so uh, that's why they were so oversubscribed lately. There's a lot more to tell about these schools, but it is already late, so we'll uh, finish here here. On this slide you can find some links for uh, more resources if you haven't had enough. In the meantime, uh, Emma has answered a lot of questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was really great. So if you have any other questions, you can always send me an email. Here are the contact details. I also offer one-on-one -on -one support through my website. You can book uh, secondary school support and then we talk about the schools that are most interesting for your family. So I hope you feel more confident now uh, choosing a school and I hope we haven't overwhelmed you too much. Good night. Thank you for attending. And within a few days, I will send you the recording and the slides. It was really fun and good luck everyone with the lottery and the choosing a school. Oh, one thing to add that I forgot to say. Uh during the webinar. Uh, tomorrow there is an open day for the Esprit schools. So those include Denise, Alaska, uh, Berlag, uh, Spring High, and it takes place at the main location of ACE, uh, the international school close to South uh, Railway Station. And uh, so they, all schools have a sort of market stand there. So I'm planning on going there. Uh, maybe I see some of you there as well. And then uh, you can see all those schools together. So that uh, yeah. saves some time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, slap lekker allemaal. <laughs> Bye. Bye.